Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. So I've been building some laptops. Uh, as you know, uh, Ravi and I were actually working on an Amiga laptop together. That's now up with Ravi, so uh, he's going to go ahead and build a new case. I've also been working on a new case for a new laptop, and it's this guy right here. And I have been pop riveting and welding a nice thin aluminum aluminium case anyway i'm going to get into that one a little bit later that one's that one's going to be my pride and joy i've got two that aren't quite my pride and joy <laughs> one is 3d printed which is this guy right here it's um it's sort of in the pokemon colors but um but it works and then this one here which is the one that i really want to talk to you about today which is my wooden laptop. I literally hacked a case together in minutes in the shed. I'm gonna show you how I did that. And uh, I wanna talk you through some of the stuff that's in here, some of the electronics and some of the dubiousness that holds this all together. Keep watching. This is a 3D printed laptop. There's, there's no battery management circuit in there. This was at a time when I was just, you know, uh, throwing caution to the wind and just making use of lithium ion cells. Um, it's got a, a HDMI LCD screen in the back here, uh, built in between this bezel and this enclosure. Uh, and it literally, it just fitted, it was perfect. So I printed these on a 3D printer in different colors. I also made my own hinge for this as well. And you can see where I've put pins through. I actually used a little bit, I think it was um, a core of some twin and earth, copper twin and earth cable to pop through the hinge here. But the hinge works really quite well, I quite like it. And um, what we've got in here then is we've got a Pi uh, 3B Plus. I think that was the thing that sort of that disappointed me a little bit. It was a bit on the slow side. And here's the uh, HDMI cable, which is really quite interesting because it's, it's the smallest and thinnest tiny little HDMI cable ever. That HDMI ribbon cable is the thing that connects to the screen here. The other thing that connects to the screen clearly is power supply. So there's two in parallel here, two in parallel here, two in parallel here, and they effectively um, drive 12 volts to the display and then this in turn drives 5 volts to the Raspberry Pi uh, there's no speakers in here there's nothing special in here at the moment um, and as I say there's no battery management in here I love the size of this it really is super cute and then uh, the keyboard here is a little Bluetooth keyboard and that just fits perfectly in place here um, yeah this is quite a cool little laptop i sort of like it but i want something that i can keep in the van as much as i absolutely adore this laptop i won't be able to keep it in the van because it gets so hot in the van it will melt all of the plastic so it, it was a great idea at the time uh, and as i say sort of down to the fact that it's um got a Pi 3 in it I think I've sort of lost interest because I didn't quite have the beans that uh, that I needed or that I wanted so <laughs> ding 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 <laughs> yeah this one's got a missile switch on the side of it uh, but ultimately ah oh, there she is look at that this is my newest latest and greatest piece of kit keyboard here you just pop, pop the keyboard out. Clearly, you know, you've got to have some kind of games controller and a mouse. Let's talk about some of the things that are inside this laptop then. <laughs> okay, excellent stuff. This is Milky Tracker running on my laptop, my Pi Top. And here's the Pi Top in all of its glory and you can see over here the little battery meter which is absolutely magnificent so it shows you we've used a little bit of the battery there's quite a lot of the capacity left and uh, ultimately then this little battery management PCB over here will turn off when this guy gets down to about uh, 10 volts or so that's the Pi in the corner and the Pi has got heat sinks on most of the key chips 
We also have this games controller. Let me show you that in action. And we'll get into RetroArch here. And once we're into RetroArch, we go full screen and everything then is controlled by the joystick here. So I'm doing this one-handed, please excuse the fact that I am. So just go ahead and select that game, play that game, and give it a few seconds. And boom, off we go. Look at that. We've gone from a usable <laughs> music creator straight into a gaming machine. So let's go ahead and uh, play a little bit of our type. So there we have it, that's our type all up and running and then on top of that we can get on and connect to the internet rather rapidly, literally just hit the chromium button, straight away I've got Google up, my Gmail's are loading here and YouTube, my YouTube details and my YouTube accounts loading up here, absolutely magnificent. I am absolutely digging this thing. Literally, keyboard, mouse, everything in a wooden box covered with duct tape. <laughs> now, if we move over to the right-hand side, we're going to have, at some point in the future, a rather cute laptop. A LED screen, a much prettier screen, more power and a better layout, a better keyboard, all the rest of it. Keep your eye out for this one. This one's going to be a bit special. So what we've got in here, um, we've got a uh, an LCD display from a repurposed laptop. So there's an old laptop that I had in the corner that uh, that had an LCD display on it, and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to make use of that. And you can buy these little cards from eBay. Uh, I popped a little video out, in fact if I remember I'll stick a link up somewhere down there or wherever. So really it's just as simple as buying the appropriate PCB and connecting it to your LCD display. There is also, um, if you've got a, a backlit LCD display, then there is also a little high voltage module here which needs to connect to it to uh, to drive the uh, the backlight for the LCD display. I've got here a little battery capacity and voltage meter, which is very useful uh, because this battery management circuit uh, will shut off uh, at about sort of nine and a half, ten volts. It'll turn everything off, like you know, no warning, just it'll just do it. So this guy gives us a little bit of a of an idea of what the voltage levels are like and uh, when we can expect the laptop to shut down. And actually, it'll run for about two or three hours with just these six 18650s in there. In the corner here, we've got a little uh, buck converter, which takes the 12 volts coming out of the, uh, the cells here, the power supply, and it converts it to five volts, and those five volts go on to the header pins of the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is a Raspberry Pi 4, which I must say I'm absolutely loving. I'm digging the Raspberry Pi 4 at the moment. So there's a HDMI cable, there's a micro HDMI cable, which goes into the, um, into the PCB here, into the display PCB. It's got Wi-Fi on board, Bluetooth on board, four gigs of RAM, uh, pretty quick video card. Uh, you know, I'm actually quite impressed with, with the way that works. And the other thing here is that literally everything, the keyboard, <laughs> the mouse, everything fits into this little wooden box that I made. And and it has a missile switch and a charge port on the side of it. And one of the things that I forgot to mention to you actually is the fact that it also has in it, uh, just down here and here, two little tiny stereo speakers. And then the other thing which I think you might find sort of interesting is 
In order to stop the screen from flopping open, you never want things to flop, do you? Um, what I did is I got a little bit of waxed string and I've used that bit of waxed string there. I've tied it around the missile switch and around one of the screws in the, in the LCD. So yeah, it's dubious, but yeah, it's just sort of a bit of fun. If you, if you don't own a Raspberry Pi, I strongly recommend getting yourself on they're really good fun um, very very useful bits of kit indeed now uh, going forwards I'm gonna give you a preview of future video and this my good friends is my piece de resistance as you can see it is significantly thinner than all of the other computers that I've made. This guy has got an LED display from a laptop inside of it. Now it's looking a bit bare in there at the moment. The shell is completely aluminium. I have pop riveted everything together. I've used a brass piano hinge as the hinge between the display and the main body and I've even welded, well brazed, the corners in order to make this a really good solid laptop i can't wait to finish this one off this this is is going to be absolutely epic i'm going to continue working on this and i'll get a build video up um, of this in the very near future there it is people some of my laptops that i've been working on <laughs> laptops how cool I'm, i must admit the pi 4 is quite magnificent i'm really enjoying it anyway if talking of enjoying things you are enjoying these videos please make sure you give us a good old thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you on the next video take care thanks for watching bye for now